So NVIDIA have finally shown us their new 50 series graphics cards. So I thought we could do with discussing what that means for us simmers. I've done a more general video about the 50 series launch over on my tech channel. So feel free to head over there and check that out too. I'll leave a link in the description, but this is gonna be very much more focused on what it means for flight simmers. First things first, don't be fooled by NVIDIA's marketing shenanigans. They claimed on stage that the 5070 at $549 will give 1490 performance. Now they quickly followed this up by saying this wouldn't be possible without AI, which is to say that their new multi-frame generation technology is what's doing the heavy lifting. So not really an apples to apples comparison. Nvidia's new multi-frame generation technology now allows up to three generated frames for every one traditionally rendered frame. So that's where these claims of the 5070 giving 4090 performance stems from, because you guessed it, the 4090 can't do multi-frame generation. So yeah, it's, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Don't be fooled. If you want a more accurate uh, gen over gen performance improvement indicator, look at Nvidia's charts and pay particular attention to A Plague Tale Requiem, as this game doesn't support the multi-frame gen tech, similar to Far Cry 6, which doesn't support any DLSS at all. These are more indicative of raw horsepower uplifts that you can expect from 50 series compared to 40 series. It's hard to get a good measurement on these performance uplift figures uh, because they're all kind of using the 40 series as a baseline and handily there are no precise figures on the charts. <laughs> so, But I would say it's, it's about right for gen over gen improvement and roughly what I expected. So good, but ultimately not that exciting, particularly as I'm not really a lover of frame gen. So these, you know, incredible claims of 2x performance using their new frame gen technology doesn't interest me that much because honestly, I would rather not use frame gen if possible. I tolerate it in the sim, um, but if I'm going to play like Call of Duty, there is no way I'm turning on frame gen. And frankly, in an ideal world, if my system could get 4K60 without frame gen, you can guarantee I'd be turning it off. I would much rather have real frames all day long. Regarding the new cards though, my advice is to wait for the real reviews to come out, um, but in general, if I were building a new PC, obviously I would go for these cards, it makes sense. Um, if I had a 20 series or a 30 series and I was looking to upgrade, I'd probably go for these cards. Um, but if I was on 40 series, which I am, I've got a 4080 Super, I think I'd be giving this generation a pass um, unless I needed every last drop of power maybe for VR or maybe like a three screen 4K multi monitor sim setup. I think that's probably a reason to upgrade but otherwise I think I'm going to be staying put. More so than the graphics cards, what I found to be more interesting actually um, was the new DLSS 4 suite of technologies. Originally, when I started watching the presentation and they started talking about DLSS 4, I kind of thought, wow, this is great, but they're going to like, you know, paywall most of these features for NVIDIA 50 series. So it's not going to be that relevant to me, but that's not true. DLSS 4 is what brings the new multi-frame generation tech to the new 50 series cards. And that feature is exclusive to 50 series, but there's a ton of other improvements within DLSS that can work on the 40 series, 30 series, and even 20 series. So looking at this chart here, we can see that all of the existing features of DLSS now have an enhanced label on it, meaning for owners of current gen or older cards, we're going to see improvements. NVIDIA say this is the biggest upgrade to their AI models since the release of DLSS 2.0 in 2020, and that DLSS Ray Reconstruction, DLSS Super Resolution and DLA-A will now be powered by transformer models. This is the same technology that powers AI models like ChatGPT. Prior to this, DLSS has used CNNs, that is a convolutional neural network. Uh, they say now with DLSS using the new transformer models, this will improve image quality with less ghosting and higher detail in motion. So what does that mean for us simmers? Well, those of you that have been around for a minute will probably guess where I'm going with this, and that is the glass cockpit displays. Now, I really like DLSS super resolution in general. However, in the sim, I can't turn it on. I find the way that it makes our glass cockpits look all blurry and smeary, a complete deal breaker. However, perhaps with DLSS 4, and its use of these new transformer models, Nvidia may very well just fix this right up for us. And this might not just be wishful thinking on my part either. Digital Foundry had a uh, the chance to have a preview with the new 50 series and as part of their testing they compared the upgraded version of DLSS Super Resolution. 
Now you can see here on the left we've got DLSS 3 which at the time of recording is the current version of DLSS and this is a screen grab from Cyberpunk. Now pay particular attention to this kind of holographic screen thing they've got in the game here with kind of data scrolling across it. Look how it's not that dissimilar in appearance to our glass cockpits with DLSS enabled and you know lo and behold it's very smeary, it's very blurry just like our glass cockpits. Now Let's look at the same thing but using DLSS 4 with the new transformer model at work and you can see there is a massive improvement. It's hard to say if it's 100% perfect. Um, of course you kind of got art direction and kind of the visual style that they're going for in the game. Some of that might have some inherent smeariness to it. I don't know. I don't really play cyberpunk but it's definitely an improvement and if we could see a similar uplift in visual quality in our glass cockpits then I think that would maybe be the time where I would elect to turn on DLSS Super Resolution. I'm not looking for a 100% perfect solution here. I'm willing to compromise, but it needs to be better than what it is now, and this gives me hope that we might get there. Those of you that caught my video yesterday where I was pondering dropping down to 1440p to lighten the load on my 4080 Super will recall how uh, when I enabled DLSS, it really helped me at 4K. It's just I can't tolerate the smeariness of those glass cockpits. To me, everything else in the sim looks fine with DLSS super resolution. I can't tell the difference visually, but it's just those glass cockpits that are the deal breaker. What's more, NVIDIA is saying that alongside the availability of the 50 series cards, users of the NVIDIA app will be able to upgrade games and apps to use these enhancements. So unless I'm reading this wrong, this sounds almost like an official way to swap DLSS versions without having to go digging around, swapping out DLL files or using third-party DLSS swapping tools. I guess time will ultimately tell. Um, they say that 75 games can be upgraded to use 50 series new multi-frame generation tech. Handily, they've provided a list of these 75 games and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and 2024 are on the list. So if you're excited for multi-frame gen tech and 50 series, it would seem that you are in luck. What I found more interesting though, as a 40 series owner, was that NVIDIA added for those same games, frame generation gets an upgrade for GeForce 50 series and GeForce 40 series GPUs, boosting performance while reducing VRAM usage. Now to me, this is very, very welcome news. Those of you that have been following my performance testing and live streams in Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, will recall how we've been pushing the limit of my 16 gigs of VRAM on my 4080 Super, particularly with frame generation enabled to the point where a lot of the time I've elected to leave it off just to take the pressure off my VRAM. So it's gonna be cool to test this out once this feature becomes available. So while the 50 series GPUs are very cool and the pricing wasn't as awful as some of us feared, although let's be honest, they're still really expensive. Uh, for me, the real star of the show was DLSS 4 and I just couldn't believe how so much of the enhanced feature set is gonna be able to be enjoyed on older 40, 30 and 20 series GPUs. This is awesome. Personally, I'm looking forward to less VRAM usage with frame generation, and in particular, I really want to see how these new transformer-based DLSS super resolution models work with our glass cockpits. This could finally be the time for me to enable DLSS super resolution. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're planning to do in terms of upgrading. I think for me, my plan is to hold strong and keep my 4080 super for now. My feeling is that my money could be better spent on a new CPU, maybe a 9800X3D or a 9950X3D. Given how frequently we find ourselves CPU limited in the sim, I kind of feel like my money's better off going to a new CPU. Uh, and this could be especially true if we find that we can use DLS super resolution finally with these new transformer models and have some nice looking glass cockpits. I'm going to leave this one here, folks. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Look after yourselves, be good to each other, and as always, happy flying.